Some 100 rugged, hilly miles from the busy city of Portland, Maine, is the farming village of Palmyra. Here I was born on August 14, 1821, to John and Betsy White. Unlike my sturdy brothers and sisters, I was a sickly child. Before I was three years old, I fell ill with fever and severe convulsions. After several weeks, I recovered, but with a problem that was worse than the fever. Ma! Ma, come quick! James's fever's broken, but there's something wrong. Mary, I was right in the middle of needing the weak spread dough. Now, this is another of your I, false I alarms. I wouldn't call you all the way upstairs for nothing, Ma. James' head is cool now, but look at his eyes. Oh, here, let me see. Now, turn your head to the window light, boy. Oh, oh, you poor baby. Your eyes are crossed so bad, I wonder you can see it all. My eyes turned toward the bridge of my nose so badly that everything was fuzzy. This, combined with a feeble and nervous constitution, made for a miserable childhood. However, when I was seven, my father decided I should try to attend school. All right, boys and girls, take your seats. If we're ready, the two lower grades will please get out slates and chalk to copy today's spilling assignment. The three upper grades, take out your readers and study pages 24 through 36. Two. I'll write the words on the blackboard. The first one is H. O R S E. Nancy, can you tell me what that spells? Horse, Mr. Blake. Hey, <laughs> good. Here's the next word. H O U S E. Games, what does that spell? I I don't know, Mr. Blake. James White. You've been in this class for two full weeks now, and you have never been able to answer any of the questions. Uh, let me see your slate again. <laughs> Quiet, children. Now let's see it. Hmm. Can't you try to write something? I I can't see what you wrote, Mr. Blake. It It's all kind of fuzzy. I understand. I'll be over to talk with your father this evening. And so, Mr. White, with James' eyes crossed so badly, word and number recognition is impossible. It would be futile and pointless to keep him in school. Uh, but, Mr. Blake, the boy is not stupid. Well, far from it, but with his eyes, I'm afraid he'll never be able to learn to read and write. <laughs> I longed to read, to enjoy the thrilling stories of James Fenimore Cooper and Washington Irving, but it seemed that I was to remain illiterate. Oh, how that hurt. Farm work was good for me, though. By the time I was 16, my health and strength had improved. <sighs> oh, that's work, James. It gets harder every day to have those grain bags up onto that wagon. <laughs> or maybe it's just that I'm getting older every day. Pa, can I tell you something strange? Uh, of course, son. What is it? My eyes. It seems that I can see a little clearer the last few days. Well, that's fine, James. If, if my eyes become normal, maybe I could go to school. Learn to read and write and cipher. Uh, and now, boy, don't get your hopes up too high. You're ten years behind already. I, I don't want you to be cast down by disappointment. Yes, sir. Slowly, week by week, my eyes improved. My excitement grew. Now I had hope of at least learning to read. Then one morning... My mother climbed the stairs to wake me. James, wake up. It's almost time for church. Oh, mother, let me sleep just a little while longer. James, open your eyes this instant. <laughs> All right. Mother? Mm-hmm? Something's happened. My eyes. Your eyes? 
I can see, Mother. Oh. The fussiness is gone. Oh. Your face is as clear as can be. Oh. I can see. Oh. Well, my pa promised me a horse and buggy on my 18th birthday. I'm going to polish the buggy and brush the horse and go courting Claire Patton. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Ethan. Me, I plan to save up and buy a good farm before I think about courting and marrying. I want to have the biggest and best farm in Somerset County. What about you, James? What's your dream? I want to be a scholar. <laughs> a scholar? <laughs> yes, I want to get a good education. You better forget school, James. You're too old. You never catch up now. Just stick with farm work. But you don't understand. I feel worthless. I can't read or write or keep accounts. I wish I'd never been born. James, are you sure this is what you want? You're 19 years old. You'll be out of place in an elementary school. I don't care about that, Father. I must take this chance to get an education. Your father and I can't do much to help you. I'm not asking anything. I know. But here... Your wages for working on the farm. Father. Hush, you have it coming. And here's three dollars for the tuition. I made you a suit of clothes. Take it. And enough bread for six days. We'll see you on Saturday. Each Monday, I walked the five miles to school in St. Albans, Maine, and returned home on Saturday. I studied 18 hours of every 24 to catch up with my age group. James White, as preceptor of St. Albans Academy, it is my pleasure to present you with this certificate stating your qualifications to teach reading, writing, and arithmetic. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Don't thank me, Mr. White. The credit goes to you. When you first came here, you couldn't work a simple problem <laughs> in single rule of three. <laughs> I couldn't tell a verb from an adverb or an adjective. Never have I seen a scholar accomplish so much in 12 short weeks. What are your plans now? I have been engaged to teach the Troy District School next term. Good luck. I'm sure you'll be a good teacher. In those days, children went to school during the winter months because they were needed to help on the farms in the summer. They learned mostly by endless repetition from ragged, out-of-date books. I had to study hard each night just to stay ahead of my classes. It's good to have you back home, James, now that the school term is over. I sure can use your help around the farm. Father, I hope you won't be angry, but I plan to return to St. Albans next term. Uh, I don't know, son. You're a good farmer, and I need your help. I've decided that teaching will be my life's work. Father, for the first time, I feel like more than a useless lump of clay. I finally feel like a man. James, I hate to see you leave St. Albans after only five weeks. You have a good mind. I don't intend to put an end to my education, Mr. Allen, but I must earn some money. I won't remain a charge on my parents. Determined to earn my own way, I shouldered my pack in the summer of 1841 and walked 40 miles to the Penobscot River to apply for a job in a sawmill. Mr. White! James White, will you be coming over here for a minute? Yes, Mr. Kelly, what do you want? James, I'd like you to take over the blanket saw. Now, mind, it's a dangerous job, and I understand if you refuse. But it pays 25 cents a day more than the job you're doing now. I'll take it, Mr. Kelly, and thanks. Now are we getting along with the blanket saw, Mr. White? I think the blade needs sharpening, Mr. Kelly. Every now and then it gets held up on a knot, and I have to crawl under the platform and kick it free. You best be careful doing that, lad. The saw could kick back on you. What's that? There it goes again. I'll get under there and give it a kick. Oh! Are you all right, lad? You better get some help. Get me out of here. The saw bucked when I kicked my ankle. Easy, lad. Easy. Easy. 